Hey guys, Winslow Bent here today with another really cool episode of This Old Truck. With us today is a 1942 Ford Snowgo. And this is from my personal collection. A friend of mine called me a couple of years ago and said, hey, I've got an old piece of snow removal equipment you may want to check out. Stop by his house, brought a trailer, brought my billfold, instantly realized I did not have a big enough trailer and fell in love with this old piece of machinery. I found an old friend of mine who actually ran one of these things. I want to hear what it was like to actually be chewing through the snow in the meanest of Wyoming winters in a Ford Snowgo. So I'd love to introduce you guys to my friend Opie. Opie's from Jackson, Wyoming, owns Yellow Iron Excavation. Back in the day, Opie used to actually run one of these things. How are you, Opie? Good, you and well. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. All right, so just give me the basics here. Why on earth do you need one of these things and what would you use it for? Like, when do you go, oh man, I need to break out the snow go? Like, this thing is absurd. Yeah. So basically what it is, is once you plow your roads and the banks get too high for the plow trucks to throw them over the edge, or they drift shut, which in Wyoming, we have drifting. The plows aren't tall enough to throw the snow over the edges to open up the road. Uh -huh. So then you would bring in, and everybody, you know, snow goes where we was always rotary, bring the rotary in. Bring the rotary. So you gotta bring the rotary in. So you use it on a lot of occasions, but basically what your blower is used for is when the plow trucks can't get the roads wide enough. So then you gotta come in and blow them. So you're mainly working on a, on a highway, you're mainly working the, the side of the road yep. and saying this stuff that's piling up in the side and making the road narrower and narrower, you gotta I gotta it. get it out of here. You gotta get it out of here and then I'm creating storage for the next storm. So the telltale sign that a rotary's been here is sheer those banks. sheer walls. Yep, whether they're this high or eight feet high. Well, let's go around the front and check okay. out this blower a little bit. I mean, look at this, I'm six feet tall you got three augers here. And what's that? That's the fan, right? The fan, yep. Okay, so this is chewing. All these things are turning and just feeding stuff into the fan. Right. And then away she goes. Away she goes. I would get started, say, like at four o'clock in the morning. Once I got to the site and started blowing snow on a county road, I would guess by 5.30, I would take the doors off. All the heat and everything would come up through that floorboard. And you're, you're just yeah. sweating. I would take the doors off, and if you look on the very back, you could set them right there, because they're just, you pop the pin. Yeah. And then you could bungee cord them, or rope, to yeah. the back of the truck. Because they would get so hot inside <laughs> that cab that you just, you couldn't take it. Unbelievable. And another thing is, you know, all the time you were rotaring, you always tried to rotary on the driver's side. Even though you'd be on the opposite side of the road, because you wanted a line of sight, you okay. see what I'm saying? You'd be on the opposite side of the road. So you're using this as your guide? This is your guide. You're looking out the yep. windshield. From this side, you can kind of see where you're going. If the wind's not blowing. And the only headlights are those old six volt headlamps on the yep. top. And it's, and it's pitch black, right? Pitch black. As a blower operator, and you want to be the best, so that means you want straight lines, you want to be the edge of the road. And the problem is, is if you get to augering along and you start to eat too much, the snow would pull you. This would just start to dig in, and no matter what you can do with all four chains on, the blower would just start sucking you off the road. So this thing just gets so then, a mind of its own. Well, you think about it, you got all the force over here, no force over here. So it was a, it was a fine line. I remember the first couple times, it was like, oh my God, you know. Yeah. There's still a lot of people that use them on their places for their private driveways. There's quite a few up in Island Park. Well, I mean, again, I'm in this thing two grand. I mean, you own some beautiful machinery, right. brand new, fancy. Yep. Yeah, they run 180,000 just for a loader mount. I mean, the newer truck mounted ones. Are so the blower is 180,000 that goes on the front of, of, your, loader. of your big loader. I'm a $300,000 loader. A 300, yep. So you're in at, you're in at yep. a half million bucks. Yep. You're in it for two grand, so I'll hire you. <laughs> Let's go check out the rear engine on this thing. All right, well, I'm gonna pull these panels off here so we can show you the, the rear engine. So here is the beast, 501 cubic inch international red diamond. So uh, this is a straight six gas engine. Gas eating engine. Gas, <laughs> gas eating engine. I can't imagine how many gallons per hour it burns, but this thing, when it's running, this, first of all, this is your fuel tank up here. This is gravity fed. So it is beer bonging fuel down into this engine at an ungodly rate. You run this thing into a bank of snow and all of a sudden it goes from no load on it to holy hell, I got to start making some power. And that's where the governor is going to come in 
and just start dumping fuel into the engine. So now the governor's working, trying as hard as it can to keep this thing going at 2000 RPM to keep that blower turning. So it's constantly working, adding fuel and pulling fuel out. Another thing that's interesting, so I kind of looked up the history of these vehicles. So at the time you would have started with a, a Ford, a one and a half ton or two ton Ford truck. And that would have just been the cab and the engine in the front. Then uh, a four wheel drive system had to be added to this vehicle. And that was called a Marming Harrington four wheel drive. A really interesting company to check out. And debatably, those were the guys that actually figured out what four wheel drive was. So this is potentially the first four wheel drive vehicle. You know, you got your Jeeps and your power wagons and stuff like that. But if you look at your history books, Marming Harrington was out doing this stuff before those guys were. If this thing was only two wheel drive, when you're feeding into snow like that, this rear end would be doing this. Okay. So they had to be four wheel drive and you would chain up all four. This was the most important part for me was to keep the front end chained up. Let's go check out your old office. All right, let's okay. go back a few years, can we? Yeah, let's see, oh my Lord, all right. So that's the, uh, the ignition on, and then hit the starter, maybe a little gas. A little should, fuel. Should... Oh yeah, there we go. All right, so. I am sure the emergency brake does not work. No, I don't think anything works up here. Oh yeah, huh? It does have brakes, which is great. Memory link, the power steering, <laughs> love it. Oh yeah, look at how much play there is in the steering wheel, it's ridiculous. I mean, I wouldn't want to go for it about 10, 15 miles an hour. Tank her up, run it. <laughs> run it, watch it, Terry. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It is great. What a cool piece of history, I mean. Yeah, I mean, the snow that these things have blown and the roads they've kept open, it's yeah. just unbelievable. You know, and, and they still go to this day. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I think that's the best part. Yeah, for sure. sure. So let's go around here to the right again. Okay. And uh, we'll park on the pavement. Okay. And crank uh, her up. try and crank her up. Okay. Yeah, we'll see what happens. So we're right around here is probably pretty good. Come on, baby. Oh, fun, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Oh my lord. So just imagine sitting in that all day, sitting in that for at least six, eight hours. I can't. Just doing this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the way the whole thing shakes is yep. incredible. It's amazing. I mean, just driving around the uh, the block right. is fairly intimidating. Yep. You turn that blower on, and, and stuff's going happening. Yep. Stuff's going she down. She starts rolling so, along. I mean, the amount of energy, the inertia, everything yeah. going through yeah. all those augers. Yeah. It's absolutely insane. Unbelievable. And look at the mess we made. I mean, we pitched out, how far is that? I don't know, 50 yards. Yeah. If you look at how far the uh, the melons went. Yeah. It was always fun to get them clear mornings as the sun was coming up and just get the auger in good snow and shooting it out there. Oh, it's so Unbelievable. cool. Unbelievable. It's yeah. so cool. Buddy, yeah. thank you thank so you. much for coming by. No, I hope it was to fun. See you soon. Thanks, man. All right, yeah. take it easy. See ya. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode, 1942 Ford Snow Go. Please click subscribe and ring that bell.